Hi there. I'm just waiting to see what happens now if we get a live feed for the court today for Elijah, for the parents, well, the mother and her friend. So I've been checking every channel I know that has been broadcasting about it and nothing so far. So, so how's your day been? Mine's been quite busy. Had to go into the town, which I hate. Then I've come back and started on build, continuing to build my TV unit. It's easy enough to do, but it's a pain in the backside, and it's so flipping heavy. You have to work from the top. So you've got the t top of the TV unit lying on the floor, and you work upward to the base of the TV unit. And then you've got to lift it and pick it up and stand it up. I can't do it. So I'm going to ask, to ask my son if he can come over and do it for me, help me. It needs three people actually because you need one on each end and one in the middle to support the middle because the panels. I've even got to get some wood glue because where the two panels are meeting, they're not meeting properly. And I've tried everything a hammer, tapping it with a hammer to knock them in. But as soon as I move the TV in, they just slide out again. I think, oh my lord. So, I'm just checking now all the TV news channels that I know. <sighs> oh my lord. Two year old fatally shot by a three year old. How the hell did that three year old get hold of the flipping gun? Oh dear. Let's check this one. I know they cover it. So, um, but we have still got like 20 to 19 to 9 to 10 minutes left before it actually starts. So, But I'll keep checking. We don't know, we don't know if we're going to get alive today or not. We haven't had no updates by the two rivers police today. Maybe later, I don't know. Once again, we don't know what's happening. So... Yeah, no. mm. Let's go back to the top again and start again. Going from all of it. Mainly the ones I know, like Court TV and Law and Crime Art covering it. But ABC News was. Hmm. That's it, man. The third and the first twenty-four. 
Is that the third? It can't be January. So it's got to be March the 1st, 2024. What? What? That's months. A couple of months away, yeah. A couple of weeks anyway. Then you got one for the second, 22nd. What's that one? 27th. When's that? Back to my lap. Yeah, that's tomorrow. Let's see what they're doing now. They've got live at the moment, ABC News. So. Tell me about Wendy Williams. Still looking, guys. I'm still looking. ABC are the only ones that are alive at the moment. But I'm not covering, I don't think that's covering what I want to cover. You know what I mean? So, um, what's News Nation? We'll have to be covering it. No, I think like doing the uh, trial art and the about the uh, the actor who shot someone while filming. Yeah, about doing that one. Let's look here. They better air it, they better go live with it because you don't get any information. See, they aired it on the first day, the first time they did it on the Friday. So you think they'd be in there again, maybe? But there's nothing. You watch, I'm going to find out, and it's going to be finished by the time I find out where it is. Then more news and let me know in chat, please. No. Let's check no. They aired the Chad Dorman, who was in court. They aired that one. Mm. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if we're going to get a live or not. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
Hmm. Have I got Fox News? Because they they talk about the um lines, so you think they that's try Fox News. News live stream. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really don't know what's happening. So. I said to God, if I find out someone else is airing this on YouTube and they didn't put it out there that they know the link, who knows who's doing it? You know what I mean? I will be puny. But now he's going live on anything here. So, what I'll do, I'll find some people who have been talking about it, and we'll go through that. Um, look, Eliza Vu update. Oh, oh god, this is only a very short one. So I'll play it, but it's only a very short. Oh god, go away. of the search for Elijah Vu. I'm Perry of Postalacos reporting live here in Manitowoc outside the theater, which has become the volunteer search party headquarters. The three-year-old boy's disappearance on Tuesday morning has brought people from all over the region of Northeast Wisconsin to help in the search effort. I met Carl Wallace while he was searching a dam near his property for any sign of Elijah. He lives along the West Twin River in the Two Rivers area. At approximately 10 o'clock, I noticed uh, lights flashing through the bedroom window. He says he saw Sheriff's Department cars blocking off Highway BB overnight Saturday into Sunday and boats searching the river. We've seen three or four different boats, Coast Guard, uh, the pontoon boat, an airboat. I went to the river's boat launch around midday Sunday and saw several cars, at least two of them labeled as canine search and rescue vehicles. Clayton Matuli made his way up to Manitowoc County from Oshkosh to join in the search effort. We decided to come up this way just because we want to help make a difference. The more people that we can get together to do this, um, the more we can actually maybe make them that little bit of a difference. And Jessica Guth came from Sturgeon Bay. We have kids of our own, and so if it was one of ours, we'd want everybody to look. We spoke with another search party volunteer, Ann Sear, earlier this week, and she is continuing to spend time looking for Elijah. The whole thing is surreal. It's still surreal. I always have hope. I, I'm on. Until somebody can show me proof, I'm going to have hope. Two Rivers Police sent in a news release around noon on Sunday that they are searching city rivers, along with help from dive teams from Door County, and Green Bay. Reporting live in Manitowoc, Perry Apostolakos, NBC 26. Hmm. 
New at 10, we're hearing from members of the search team for missing three-year-old boy Elijah Vu. Elijah has been missing from the Two Rivers area since early Tuesday morning, and search efforts have since expanded to his hometown of Wisconsin Dells. These searches have focused on land and water, with volunteers from across the region working with police and firefighters to provide assistance. Elijah is 45 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes. He has a birthmark on his left knee. Volunteers stop by the search's home base, checking off maps of where they've searched, taking photos of what they found, and having everything sent to police. We have a little boy out there. That's lost. You pray. You don't know where he's at. And if it was my kid, I would want... Everybody here. I just pray that he's safe. A spokesperson for the Vu family says they'll be taking a break from the search tomorrow, but they'll be back at work on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday through Sunday. It actually makes me a little bit emotional um, because there is so much love pouring from the Vu family and their extended, extended family. And um, they're, they're going through such a terrible time and they continue sh to show gratefulness and grace. I don't know how they're doing it. Tomorrow afternoon, Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, and co-defendant Jesse Vang are expected to be back in court where they face child neglect charges. Police want to remind anyone with information to call the Crime Stoppers tip line at 844-267-6648. All right. It is day six of the search for Elijah Vu. I so as I said, there's not a lot going on. They, they're not letting, keeping out and keeping up me. And I'm checking every channel I've got. Let's see if there's anything. Got it. Yes, we're live. We're live. This is it. I hope it's this one. My sound's up. So they obviously haven't got the sound on yet. There, Bing. Looks like they're in a different court today. Don't tell me we've missed it. I will be confused. The state of Wisconsin versus Jesse Bang, 24 CF 162. Uh, appearances, appearances in courtroom. State appears by Jacqueline LaRue. Mr. Bang appears in custody with attorney Heather Faye. This is a special appearance counsel. Uh, matters on the calendar for an initial appearance today. Uh, Attorney Faye, do you have a copy of your complaint? We do, Judge. We believe it's reading at this time and request a preliminary hearing. March 7th at 10.30. Bail's been set. Anything else for the record from the state? Judge, I don't know. Oh, yeah, we should probably check with Mr. Wu again. Sorry. Thank you. Um, Mr. Vu, um, you have the opportunity to address the court again, uh, in this case, if you care to. Um, uh, if you wish to make a statement in, on, this, on the record for Mr. Vu's case as well, you're welcome to. Um, I just need, need to have you let me know whether or not you want to make a statement. Um, what's, the st what's the statement I made earlier not for this? Sorry, well, that's okay. It's uh, we we call the cases separately, so each each case has its own record made. So if you want to make a statement for the record on this file, you can. I certainly heard what you had to say earlier, 
And my response would basically be the same. We're not taking up bail today. And if uh, bail were to be addressed at some point down the road, uh, you'd be notified of that. So you wish to say anything else for the record today, sir? Yeah, um, no, that's all. OK. Uh, anything else then, Attorney LeBrun? No, Judge, thank you. Attorney Judge? No, Judge, thank you. Then we're adjourned. Uh, anyone who was uh, logged in for um, uh, Bauer and Bang, um, you're free to log out. Uh, who's next at the jail? I'm telling you, I missed it. Eight minutes it was, and I missed it. Are they serious? They should have had this up ages before it was due to go live. They could have said, had it waiting, you know what I mean? Upcoming. I don't believe that. Right, what I'll do, I'll see if I can find. I don't even know what channel that was on, man. I will try and find it now. Okay, so that we can get oh two. Right, so let's see if we can see I looked on them had nothing saying about a live. Let's see if it starts from the beginning. I hope so. Yeah. Looks like it's done from the beginning. She had nothing on that page say waiting or upcoming. Nothing. I said this would be the channel that would have it. But then let's just go live without any warning. Oh, that's flipping hopeless. People want to see this. So it looks like he's still got his bond. Ah. But I'd like to hear what was said. Hmm. Let's just go past this piece. Hmm. Just leave it there. We'll leave one from there. Put the sand on. I can't lip read. Put the sand on, you silly bleeders. We cannot lip read. We can't read minds. We can't do anything. So please put the sand on. Um, March 7th at 10.30? Bail's been set. Attorney uh, LeBree, do you know if there's anyone yes, I uh, that wishes to make a statement in accordance with Marcy's law? Yes, Judge, and I believe it is the phone number Mark Orison. Okay. Um, can the person who's on Orison's iPhone unmute? Yeah, I care. Are you a victim in the case with Ms. Bauer? Uh, I'm, I'm the. Uh, the family of the victim, yes. Okay, and you wanted to make a statement today? Yes. All right, I need you to state your name and spell your last name for the record. Yeah. Orson Boo, O R S O N B U E. All right, sir, keeping in mind that this is uh, uh, just the initial appearance and all we're doing today is setting the prelim, you do have the right under Marcy's law uh, to address the court at any proceeding. This would be one, so go ahead and tell me what you care to. Okay, yes, Your Honor. Um, our family would like to ask that the court does not allow to change any bail and bond um, and have 
have these two individuals uh, are fully accountable for their actions or lack thereof. After reading just a few things from the criminal complaint, these two individuals should not be allowed to walk free amongst us until we find where a lot of it is. That's all. All right. Um, just so you're aware, uh, Mr. Vu, uh, the court's not taking up any issues in regards to bail today. Um, if uh, a motion for bail is made uh, prior to any hearing or a bail hearing is set, uh, you'll certainly get notice uh, through the DA's office. So just make sure you stay in touch with the victim witness coordinator, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Anything else for the record, Attorney Lebrie? No, Judge, thank you. Attorney Larson, anything else for the record? No. Then we're adjourned. Attorney uh, Faith, uh, can we do Ms. Reed right away? Not getting Ms. Reed, can you hear me? Please. Yes. Great. We'll go on the record in the state of Wisconsin. No, nothing that's the state of Wisconsin versus Shawnee Reed. 24 CF 126. No, I'm not. Francis. No. Bill Prost will say, Ms. Reed appears in custody of attorney Heather. This is annoying me because I keep taking the volume off. And we're not hearing what they're saying, and we can't flip in the creek. And I only turn the volume up after everything's been said. This is so annoying. Looks like it's going to be a quick early night for me then because, as I said, there's nothing much has been said about this case. It's a shame. We could talk about Harmony Montgomery or Harmony Renee, as her mum now calls her. In state of Wisconsin versus Jesse Bang, 24 CR 162, uh, appearances. In courtroom. State appears by Jacqueline LeBrie. Mr. Bang appears in custody with attorney Heather Faye. This is a special appearance. Counsel has not yet been appointed. Uh, matters on the calendar for an initial appearance today. Uh, do you have a copy of the complaint? We do, Judge. We waive its reading at this time and request a preliminary hearing. March 7th at 10 30. Bail's been set. Anything else for the record from the state? Judge, I don't know. Oh, yeah, we should probably check with Mr. Vu again. Sorry. Thank you. Um, Mr. Vu, um, you have the opportunity to address the court again uh, in this case if you care to. Um, uh, if you wish to make a statement on, on, this, on the record for Mr. Vu's case as well, you're welcome to. Um, I just need to have you let me know whether or not you want to make a statement. Um, was the state, was the statement I made earlier not for this? Uh, sorry, well, I'm a confused. Right now. That's okay. It's uh, we we call the cases separately, so each each case has its own record made. So if you want to make a statement for the record on this file, you can. I certainly heard what you had to say earlier, and my response would basically be the same. We're not taking up bail today, and if uh, bail were to be addressed at some point down the road, uh, you'd be notified of that. So. You wish to say anything else for the record today, sir? Yeah, um, no, that's all. Okay. Uh, anything else then, Attorney Libri? No, Judge, thank you. Attorney Faye? No, Judge, thank you. Then we're adjourned. Uh, anyone who was uh, logged in for um, uh, Bauer and Bang, um, you're free to log out. Uh, who's next at the jail? What? Sam. That was short and sweet.
didn't tell us anything new and um didn't tell us if they've been charged with anything else and they've set it for march the 7th 10 30 which is 7 30 10 30 10 30 their time is 10 and 12. Four thirty my time. Okay. My next on my calendar. Put it on my phone. <laughs> so like I said, there isn't much out there. Right. Um Let's an up down, let's on up. Okay. Mr. Sina. That was the other day. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. The Two Rivers Police Department provided another update on the search for three-year-old Elijah Boo, saying they are expanding the search tomorrow with the help of two more groups. And the police department saying that Wings of Hope, which provides medical evacuation flights, and North Star Rescue, which uses canines, drones, sonar, even dive teams, are joining efforts tomorrow. Searchers are also extending into the neighboring communities of Two Rivers, as well as Wisconsin Dell where Elijah resides. Here is his photo. Elijah's three feet tall, weighs 45 pounds, has brown hair and brown eyes. He also has a birthmark on his left knee. He was last seen wearing gray pants, red and green dinosaur slippers, and he could be carrying a red, white, and black plaid blanket. Boy's mother and a co-defendant appeared in Manitowoc County Court this afternoon. Katrina Bauer's bond was set at $15,000 cash. Jesse Vang received a $20,000 cash bond. The judge signed and sealed the probable clauses yesterday. Brittany Schmidt was in court for those hearings. She joins you now live with the first alert update for us. Brittany. Bill and Cammy, there are more questions than answers when. <coughs> so we've seen this one, haven't we? That's what I mean. There's no new video, nothing new out there. It doesn't make. Oh, it's not looking good. That's all I can say. It's not looking good. It was only six minutes, 19 seconds long. Okay. And they only turned the volume on for them after everything had been said. Well, you remember the other day we looked at the statement the father, the father released. Right. So I don't know what anyone thought of that. His father didn't work that. He had help with that. But when they said um, they did, they did a check on him before letting him start their property. Why didn't you go to the police and ask for him? You've got children involved. You know what I mean? You want to see if there's anything. Because sometimes, a record check, going along and doing a record check, right, on them sites that you use, doesn't tell you anything, really, unless they've been charged. Now, he'd been charged with several incitements, wasn't it, to children. So that was enough to tell me, no. 
that guy should not be around children. So that will come up on the record on their checks. But they didn't do the right checks. So, yeah, we'll have a re listen to this. This is Audrey Cunningham, okay? Oh. Fans gathered to remember Audrey with a heartfelt... Hey, let's go back to the beginning. Oh. Last week, the 11-year-old was found in the Trinity River after she was missing for six days in Livingston. Fox 26's Jade Fleury is live there with what the family had to say. Jade. Audrey's family described her as a talented and creative young lady. They said she was lured by false pretenses that led to a sense of violence and ultimately to her death. In a recently released statement, the Cunningham Munch family saying they've been attacked on social media for showing compassion to formerly and currently incarcerated Stephen McDougall, giving him a fresh start at life by letting him live on their property. They say their interactions with McDougal were a result of their faith, which teaches them to give people a a second chance. The statement reads in part, unfortunately, the system failed us due to a loophole in the sex offender registration system. It mentioned McDougal's history of disrespect for young women, which they say did not show up when they checked the registry before allowing him to live in a camper on their property. Little Audrey's been on our hearts ever since this, you know, the Amber Alert went out. Although Angel Audrey is gone. Hey, you want to put her right in the middle like this? The Livingston community is making sure she's never forgotten. And I just thought, and my little girl um, was like, let's make something for her. So I um, wanted to do something pretty. An audience gathered to remember Audrey with a heartfelt tribute adorned in purple, which was her favorite color. Brought all my pretties of purple here to the to the memorial and it's just growing and growing only thing that means to me is make it pretty special and beautiful for her that was beautiful i've got a little girl and everybody just how could you know the system fail this little child and i'm sorry but it's just how i hope we could have caught it sooner or Audrey Cunningham's family says if they knew what they know now about about McDougal's past, they would have never let him set foot on their property. The memorial for Audrey will be held this Friday. The family says it's open to the public. Reporting from Livingston, Jade Fleury, Fox 26 News. Rubbish. They would have let him stay there. They didn't do the checks properly. He's an ex-convict. You go to the police and ask them. And they won't tell you what he was charged with. Do you know what I mean? Or what he had against him. But they can say, no, he shouldn't be around children. No, he shouldn't be around. He shouldn't be have any guns, any weapons, any drugs, any alcohol, nothing. And at least then the police would have known where he was as well so it doesn't make sense and this is a very short one but we're going to watch it new information now at five a medical examiner says an 11 year old livingston girl died from homicidal violence including blunt head trauma audrey cunningham's body was recovered from the trinity river after a six-day search don stephen mcdougall is charged with capital murder in audrey's death he was a family friend who lived in a camper behind the family's home. The Polk County Sheriff says he was supposed to take Audrey to her bus stop last Thursday morning, but she never arrived. McDougal is being held in the Polk County Jail without bond. All right, so. Bands gathered. To the sheriff investigating the murder of an 11-year-old girl admitted in audio obtained by Fox 4 that his department, quote, dropped the ball in a previous assault case involving her alleged killer. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. And I'm Steve Vigor. It's 9 o'clock. Investigators discovered the body of Audrey Cunningham in the Trinity River near Houston earlier this week. 
Last week, after she was reported missing, authorities arrested Don McDougal on a separate assault charge. Turns out that assault happened last summer, and authorities missed the chance to arrest him before he allegedly killed this young girl. Fox Sports' Blake Hansen has the latest tonight. Blake. Stephen Heather, the sheriff's office down there, told the Houston station that the victim initially identified the wrong person. The victim's attorney disagreed, though, with that characterization and said that his client uh, said with certainty that McDougal was his attacker all the way back in September. Don, Don McDougal was no stranger to the criminal justice system when authorities shared he was the last person seen with Audrey Cunningham before her disappearance. His rap sheet includes convictions for assault and child enticement. This week, the Polk County District Attorney charged him with capital murder after authorities discovered Cunningham's body in the Trinity River. The medical examiner says she died of blunt trauma to the head. After Cunningham's disappearance, the Polk County Sheriff's Office initially jailed him on an aggravated assault charge. But court documents show that assault case dates back to August 19th when a woman and McDougal asked a man for help jumping a car. When the man helped, McDougal allegedly stabbed him in the back multiple times. Polk County Sheriff Byron Lyon said Monday that McDougal finally talked about the case when arrested last week. During that investigation, if there were some circumstances that took place that would not allow us to be able to arrest him at that time, and he would not cooperate, would not uh, basically lawyer up, would not talk with the investigators. A timeline the sheriff's office shared with Houston Station, KPRC, reveals he had been on investigators' radar since September. The sheriff's office said the victim initially identified another man before saying he was certain it was McDougal who attacked him. The victim's girlfriend met with the sheriff about a lack of progress in the investigation in November. An audio recording was obtained by Fox 4. We dropped the ball on this, and uh, we're trying to find a ball and get it fixed. The stabbing victim's attorney, Dave Feldman, told me over the phone Friday, it's a fair statement and conclusion that had this been properly investigated, had the ball not been dropped, I don't think you'd be talking to me about the disappearance and murder of Audrey Cunningham. <laughs> McDougal is charged with capital murder in the Cunningham case. The district attorney there has not yet decided whether to seek the death penalty. Stephen, other. So, Steve, did they not think it was urgent enough to go out and find this guy? Even after they come forward and said, look, it's this guy. This is, okay, we picked out the wrong picture, but I know it's Dougal. You know what I mean? Could they not have got on their car or on their pedal boats? Because obviously they don't move fast enough. Right? And Paul to me. This young girl will be alive now if he was in jail. But so he dropped the ball. And the fact that his first case first victim got down, pled down to an enticement, which didn't mean he had to register. Why would you plead any case down that involves a child? You wouldn't. So the police let her down as well. Well, not the police, but the prosecutors let that, get that first child down by having it pled down to an enticement. Now, that's only a small town. People are going to know about things like this. So you're telling me the father and the grandmother didn't know about his, all these Chinese whispers going on? They knew. They were buddy buddies. So coming out now and saying, oh, we're getting ragged over, we're getting ragged on a uh, line over this and so you will be raped because if you hadn't had him on your property she would still be alive but oh no you had him on your property so then he could look after her while you're at work because grandma grandma can't take care of her so you had someone else like him coming down your property so he could take it to school he could pick her up from school if need be. 
he could do whatever he had to do. I mean, all that time he had his own time with her. Right? And no one is going to tell me he did not essay her. No one is going to tell me he didn't. Because it's in his system. He likes little girls. Well, they don't like little girls, uh, killers, in prison, mate. So have a good time when you get there. You want to pray that you do get the death sentence because at least you'll know for the next 20 years you're going to be safe. You know what I mean? You go in general population and they will have it. Because they, not, they know when you go into prison, they, they hear the news. God, they, get in, they can get on the internet so they can see the news on the internet and all this stuff. So they know when this guy comes in their prison, who he is and what he's done. So... It just annoys me to think that he thinks like that. So, anyway, I'm not going to get onto that because I start ranting and raving about him and he really gets my, he grind, he, my teeth grind when I talk, think about him. I've got to stop grinding my teeth because they do. I literally grind my teeth when I think about him. And when I think about it, the father and the grandmother and what they didn't do. And what they did do by giving him the right of way to their daughter and granddaughter 24-7. Christ's sake, he went on, they went on holidays with each other. Come on. Personally, if I had someone staying at my house, right? I don't care how friendly I was with them. I would not be taking them on holiday. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be. Not when it is with my family. This is family time. With my family. No. Sorry. So why did they take him on holiday? Why did they go to these, uh, what was it look like? A concert, outdoor concert sort of thing. Oh, no. Something's just come up. Let's have a look. See, let's see if it let me read. I noticed that the XLR cable had a short. So let. I think he's just going to show us the same. I know that. That's it, man. No, he's just going to show us what I showed you yesterday when he was in the prison in the cells and he was naked. Naked. How disrespectful of him is that? He don't care. Right. I'm going to take this little picture today because I'm not talking about him with SI, we're not. Right. Take that down. I'll put that up. Oh no. I'll put my disclaimer up. I'm not having that little boy brought into some vile and disgusting. I'm not. Bagging up all we had to go through that. But you now, um, let's see what else they've got here. We've seen the one about the first child victim. We know that. Mm -hmm. Let's just listen to this. There's some little ones I haven't read, I haven't heard. In the river, Audrey Cunningham was last seen leaving home to catch the school bus. Rosa Flores has more. I sadly announced that Audrey's body was located 
at the Trinity River on the U.S. Highway 59. Six days of searching, praying, hoping ends with a grim discovery. Authorities say cell phone analysis as well as video and social media helped them to pinpoint her location. The spot was also one of several given to authorities by Don Stephen McDougall. Based on all of the evidence that law enforcement has collected, they are in the process of preparing the appropriate arrest warrants for Don Stephen McDougall. At this time, we believe the appropriate arrest warrant is going to be for capital murder in the death of Audrey Cunningham. He is currently still in jail under an unrelated felony charge. Audrey was last seen in this Livingston, Texas neighborhood about 70 miles northeast of Houston at about 7 a.m. Thursday, state police say. But she never got on the bus and never made it to school that day. McDougal lives on the Cunningham family's property. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Last seen at 7 a.m., right? Who saw her at 7 a.m.? Because the neighbor, who's how she used to walk past every morning when she went to get the bus, she didn't see her. You know what I mean? We've only got his word that she left the house with him for him to take her to, to the bus stop. That's what he said. So if anything, he was the one who saw her last when she was getting in the car for him to take her to the bus stop. Not the neighbours. The Polk County Sheriff says they believe McDougal was the last person to see her and says he admits to leaving the house with her Thursday morning around 7 a.m. And they would have made it to the bus stop just relatively, just a little under a mile in the same community, um, real close. Did anyone see her at that st bus no. stop? No other witnesses saw her at the bus stop. Sheriff Lyons says when Audrey was reported missing and the community started searching, McDougal joined in, appearing to help. He, and he's, he was helping in her search. What does and, that tell you? Well, I mean, it, to me, it simply tells me is that he's trying to uh, give the appearances that. There's a, a case over here. Soham. I think it's called the Soham Girls Murders. Two young girls uh, who nipped out to the shops to get some candy, some sweets. And on the way back, they saw the caretaker. And the caretaker, his girlfriend, was one of their classroom assistants. So they're talking to him. Right? And he managed to get them in the house where he then killed them. And he put himself into the investigation, but into the search of, the boat, of those two girls as well. He, did, he put himself into it. He was making out, he, because he was the last one to speak to them and all this lot. He put himself into the case. That way he knows what's been said, where they're looking, where they've not looked. He has no play or he's not at fault in her disappearance and that I am part of the, the concerned party parties who are trying to locate her. Do you believe um, that? No. No, I don't. Sheriff Lyons took CNN to the area where authorities recovered a key clue in Audrey's disappearance. He says authorities located the girl's bright red Hello Kitty backpack near this dam Friday. Just a little west of us here. Was it in the, the water? No, it was along the river bank. There was enough in it to lead us to believe strongly that it is Audrey's backpack. That it was hers. What about signs of struggle or blood or any other DNA? No, ma'am. There was no signs of struggle there. Eleven-year-old Audrey has touched the hearts of many, including law enforcement in this community. Have you cried over this? <laughs> several nights, several days. Yeah. Yes, because your department dropped the flipping board. Uh, I have kids of my own. I feel that pain that they're feeling. And I talked to Audrey's mom this evening, and she says that reality has not sunk in. That's how she described it. She says that she is still processing the reality of living without her daughter and that 
she's going to need time, but she's going to need a minute. But when I talked to her yesterday, she described her daughter as a beautiful little girl. And what she asked the public for were prayers and positive energy. And Anderson, like every journalist covering the story, I also have to tell you a little bit about the suspect. We have exhausted efforts. She sounds as though she's getting upset there. To try to get comment from his family. And we have scoured court records to try to find his attorney if he has one. We have not been successful. There's a Boris. Thank you very much. Well, right, we'll listen to this one here. Tonight, a vigil was held for little Audrey Cunningham. We've brought you extensive coverage from the day an Amber Alert was issued for Audrey. And today, a man is charged with capital murder in her death. Fox 26's Abigail Dye joining us live with details on these new charges. Also, an exclusive interview with the victim from that John Stephen McDougal, that's the man accused of causing this terrible tragedy. And I've spoken with yet another person who was affected by his violent past. With heavy hearts, Livingston is healing. We will not have her walking through our doors anymore, but instead having her walk beside us in faith. After this Amber Alert turned into a murder investigation. I sadly announced that Audrey's body was located at the Trinity River on the U.S. Highway 59. 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham was the center of a search for nearly a week. But after that discovery, John Stephen McDougal, a family friend who lived on the property, was charged with capital murder. The court document saying McDougal was supposed to drop Audrey off at the bus stop February 15th, but he never did. It says cell phone and other data placed McDougal at the location that Audrey's body was found. And that rope found at that location was considered consistent with rope found in McDougal's car. He's a monster. I don't feel like he should be able to breathe the same air that we're breathing. We told you about McDougal's criminal rap sheet, including enticing a child and multiple assault convictions. Kaylin Bolin watched one of those assaults happen to her boyfriend in 2019 when court records say McDougal attacked him with a metal pipe. He was gushing blood from his head, so it was pretty bad. She says McDougal was a neighbor and the attack was likely an effort to steal their car. When I was watching that, it's like, like words can't even explain. I felt helpless. Um, I felt like there was nothing I could do. It was crazy. It was definitely something I don't want to live through again. We spoke with another victim who McDougal attacked with a knife in 2010. Terrifying. You know, it really was. I mean, he's, like I said, he seemed like a nice guy, but then he's got this whole other side to him that no one seemed to know about until now. Now the search for Audrey is turn to a search for justice. There's nothing that we could possibly say that will bring her back to us. I'm praying for y'all, and I'm so sorry that that monster had to come ever into their life. Now, McDougal is in jail tonight. He's being held without bond. And some new information tonight. We now know Audrey's visitation is on Friday, March 1st at the First Baptist Church. That's in Livingston from 5 to 8 p.m. Now, the funeral is the next morning at Rosary St. Joseph Catholic Church, also in Livingston. We'll post those e details on fox26houston.com along with this story. And I know I speak for everyone here at Fox 26 when I say I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that happened to little Audrey and our thoughts and prayers are with her family. Tonight a visual. Right. So that's really everything we've got. There's nothing really about our check. Uh, Facebook. Yeah. I'll check to see if there's any place to share this instead. Okay. You know, the last one was yesterday. At 18.11. So, as it stated yesterday, our search efforts continue throughout last night and will continue to go on our city rivers. I think they need ECU search there. I know they say they've got Wings of Hope and North Star. I've never really heard about them. Every search would go. You know what I mean? They go and they tear them rivers up. 
the let's see what else uh, um, Hang on, I'm just going to search out Elijah there, just this one. That's this one. Let's see what anyone said on here. So they're calling for help continuously because the numbers are dwindling. He'd send a three-year-old boy to a, someone who's got a conviction and only seven years earlier, her, him and her husband uh, trafficked her off, trafficked her out. You know what I mean? And yet she sends her own little boy to him. It doesn't make it it well it doesn't you know, it doesn't make sense, but it angers me. Look at this video. Now watch this video. Look at him. So it's about two there. Mm. I'm very sceptic towards uh, psychics, but there is one psychic who I do trust, and she's been, she's worked with the police, she's saying, she, um, Chad and Laura Bam. The ones who were, were sent to, to the murder of the, the, the son and daughter. Right? She, this woman, this psychic, writ it down, typed it and writ it down as well. What she saw, how it happened, everything. Right? Six months six months before those bodies were found and she was right with the way they had died and the way they had been buried and everything so We went to that bridge yesterday, the other day, I think it was yesterday, and I showed you that we are.
I don't know where he is, wants his pull. If Jesse and the baby daddy, Jimmy, did previously use to traffic Katrina, is it possible Jesse sold Elijah? Wow, well, that blood gang he's in. They are known for drugs, traf drug trafficking, prostitution, and trafficking as well. People trafficking. So, yeah, it's possible. But you see, but the thing is, when you, if you traffic a child or sell a child, yeah, and that child becomes so high profile that it can't be seen out in public, can't be seen by anyone because they don't trust anyone, yeah, when it comes to children, and because that that your boys become so high profile, and we need it to be even more high, high profile. But the thing is, by making it so high profile, if they have sold him, whoever they brought him, sold him to, will sadly get, get rid of him. How did, how did, you know what I mean? Because they can't, they can't use him because they don't trust anyone. So... One person here is just going, it's so amazing to see and meet with FBI agents going house to house, checking to see if he's being housed in one. I've watched a lot of true stories where the victims were only a block away and the kidnappers helped in the searching, but never had their house or property searched. There was another case in the UK where a mother had... Um, arranged with a relative of her husband to pick her daughter up from school right and she was going to get the other kids from school and then leave come to his pick her daughter up and go right because she wanted out of the marriage she was going to leave her husband but backfired the uncle or whatever picked her daughter up from school but the woman's husband was at home he had a sickie he went sick that day so he was at home so she couldn't leave the house right and um it didn't come out about the uncle for Oh, about a week or so after, and they found the little girl hidden in his apartment inside the base of the mattress. Right, we have the base and then the mattress on top, inside the base there. And um, she couldn't get out of the house because by then everyone was saying, phone the police, phone the police, you've got to phone the police, she's not home from school, you've got to phone the police. So she did. But you see, because... She didn't tell the police from the beginning what happened, right? If she just said, look, she isn't missing. I know where she is. I'm leaving you. Bye. Right? And go. None of that would have happened. And if she just told the police, look, I didn't want to phone you. I know where she is. She's safe. It's just that I wanted to go out the house before, while I, while I got myself out the house. But she didn't. She didn't say anything to the police. She went along with it. And she ended up in prison. I can't remember how long she got. She's out now. She didn't get long. Hold on. 
Those of you who are following both Audrey and Elijah's case, the admin in the main Audrey Cunningham group blocked me when I shared the group link, all this group link. But here it is for any of you that came over from the group. Yeah, I'm not going to have that. No one's going to it anyway, so. But. It is nice to see that they are searching the houses. It really is. But I'd be surprised if they found him, if he was local. Anywhere local. I would be gobsmacked if they found him somewhere local. But I don't think they will. So. Hmm. See, there's so much about Audrey, but nothing about Elijah. And it's so, it's really, really annoying me. It took a while. <laughs> You know what I mean? It took the time. So, but I can't see nothing else on Elijah. And that's what's annoying me. There's nothing. You know, Only this, you know what I mean? And that was just, what, about eight minutes long? And they didn't have the volume on until after they just said what they had to say. So, Let's have a read of it. This one's Elijah.
Right, so that's that one. Let's have a look. So, nothing new. There's nothing new coming out. Right, this was five days ago. This is nothing new. But I'm sorry, how do I, Clay's going to help find your little boy. He's on the ground or in the water. You need people on the ground and you need the boat specialist people in their boats on the waters. Clay's aren't going to help. Unless it's lying in an open field somewhere, it's not going to be found by a plane. You need drones that can pick up certain colours. You know what I mean? A specific colour or whatever. This is... Planes will not help. You need drones that can get lower into the lower down on the trees and which can pick up a certain colour and heat source. But I think after what, a week tomorrow now? Tuesday tomorrow? A week tomorrow? The heat source has got to get very, very slow. Very, very low. See, players can only search in certain ground and they can only zoom in so far. You're not going to see a child lying on the floor. You need zone, drones and... Oh, sorry. And um, the boats. People who know what they are doing on their boats with their high-tech equipment. Let's just listen to this one. Michelle. Yeah, we've seen that video. I showed it the other day. It is a, it's not a fake video. It's a true video. It was of a little boy who went missing. He wandered off into the woods. The, he had woods at the back of his house. And he wandered off. And the dog followed him. And as he's wandered around the woods, he's got lost. And the dog stayed with that little boy. He didn't leave his side once. Right, and that was for a while ago now, so it wasn't fake, it just wasn't Elijah. So, anyone's going around saying it was Elijah, it's Elijah. No, it's not. So, uh, <sighs> Go down to rivers and um, oh, sorry. No, it's this this is from Friday. 
This was a better one. Today's, they kept it silent until they said what they had to say and then said, and then put the mics back on. So, um, we, let's watch this one. Might as well while we're here. And authorities have arrested the boy's mother and another man. Brandon Taylor joins us now. He's got you covered on their appearance in court and the ongoing search for Elijah Vu. Caroline and Amber, authorities say Katrina Bauer and Jesse Vang are currently being held on charges of child neglect. Bauer is the mother of Elijah Vu, who was reported missing from his home in Two Rivers on Tuesday. Records show Vang lives at an apartment building in Two Rivers, the same apartment where investigators were seen collecting evidence and searching earlier this week. The two suspects had a bail hearing on their case today. During the hearing, the judge said she believed Vang was responsible for any child neglect, giving him a bond of $20,000 and prohibiting him from having any contact with Bauer. It is clear to me that taking the probable cause statement as true for today, he is the one who was present and would be responsible for any neglect um, resulting in the child being missing or the lack of care. While the two have not been formally charged, officials say Bauer is believed to be a party to the crime. She was given a $15,000 bond. Meanwhile, officials continue to search for Elijah throughout the state. The search has already crossed county lines with FBI agents seen in hazmat suits searching a landfill in Calumet County yesterday. Now, if you have any information, please contact the Two Rivers Police Department. That number is on your screen, 844-267-6648. Well, I got wrong here. This is 19 hours ago. We are learning more today about the family of Elijah Vu, the three year old boy who police say went missing in Two Rivers on Tuesday. His mother, Katrina Bauer, in court this afternoon. It's a referred charge of child neglect. Jesse Vang was also there. He's the last to see the child, and he faces the same charge. Our Megan Lee was in court for today's appearance. Four days after three-year-old Elijah Vu was reported missing, new details revealed in a crowded Manitowoc courtroom. They are the last two to have seen our baby Elijah. And at this moment, are the current suspect. A relative of the missing child asked the judge that Katrina Bauer and Jesse Vang be held without bond Friday afternoon. So until we find the truth as to the whereabouts of Elijah, we'd like to to make sure that these two are readily available for questioning. The two are being held on referred charges of child neglect. The probable cause documents are sealed, but parts of them are read in an open court. She intentionally sent that child for disciplinary reasons for more than a week to the residents. District Attorney Jacqueline LeBray gave little insights as to why Bauer and Bang are in custody. She was aware of the tactics used and the lack of care provided. Um, this was an intentional thing by her. Also in the courtroom, community members there to show support for little Elijah. The whole community is tied to this. We cannot just sit around and not do anything. Yolanda Godfrey and Sarah Deering have lost sleep thinking about where the young boy could be. Hopefully we can find him safely. Deering has a message for the community. We just want him brought home to his family safely. And if they know something, just speak up about it. Just bring this little boy home. Bauer and Bang are both being held on bond. Oh, and you can see behind me. They're expected to be in court on Monday. In Manitowoc, Megan Lee, TNJ4 News. And meanwhile, crews searching for Elijah are not giving up hope. Elijah Vu was first reported missing on Tuesday. FBI and local officers are still searching and have looked through rivers and landfills. An army of volunteers also out searching from two rivers to Manitowoc. As a mother of three grown sons and having three grandchildren, um, I wouldn't give up for my own kids. So why would I give up now? Just keep them in your prayers, everybody, because I sure wouldn't want to be in those shoes. <laughs>
Here is one more look at three-year-old Elijah Vu. Investigators are asking neighbors to check security camera video and around their properties for any sign of him. And anyone with information should call police. So that's the one we seen earlier. Then we'll go on record in state of Wisconsin versus Katrina Bauer, 24 CF 163. Uh, appearances starting in the courtroom. State appears by Jacqueline McGree. Katrina Bauer appears from the Manitowoc County Jail by Zoom and with her attorney, Ann Larson, appearing separately by Zoom. Matters on the calendar for an initial appearance today. Attorney Larson, do you have a copy of the complaint? We have received a copy of the complaint. We waive reading and we're requesting a preliminary examination. One second. Um, March 7th at 10 30. Bail's been set. Attorney uh, Lebrie, do you know if there's anyone? Uh, that wishes to make a statement in accordance with Marcy's law? Yes, Judge, and I believe it is the phone number of Mark Orison. Okay. Um, can the person who's on Orison's iPhone unmute? Yes. Okay. Are you a victim in the case with Ms. Bauer? Uh, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the family of the victim, yes. Yeah. Okay, and you wanted to make a statement today? Yes. All right, I need you to state your name and spell your last name for the record. Yeah. Orson Boo, O-R-F-O-N-B-U-E. All right, sir, keeping in mind that this is uh, uh, just the initial appearance and all we're doing today is setting the prelim. You do have the right under Marcy's law uh, to address the court at any proceeding. This would be one, so go ahead and tell me what's appear to you. Okay, yes, Your Honor. Um, our family would like to ask that the court does not allow the team to get bail and bond and um, and have have these two individuals uh, held fully accountable for their actions or lack thereof. After reading just a few things from the criminal complaint, these two individuals should not be allowed to walk free amongst them for certain time where Eliza is. That's all. All right. Um, just so you're aware, uh, Mr. Vu, uh, the court's not taking up any issues in regards to bail today. Um, if uh, a motion for bail is made uh, prior to any hearing or if bail hearing is set, uh, we'll certainly get notice uh, through the DA's office. So just make sure you stay in touch with the victim with the support here, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Anything else for the record? Attorney Lebrie? No, Judge, thank you. Attorney Larson, anything else for the record? Seeing if he changed. We are learning more today about the family of Elijah Javu. The three year old boy who police say went missing in two. Nothing's changed. So, probably, hopefully, on the 7th of March, we'll have a bit more. Hopefully, by then, we'll have, we'll have a found uh, Elijah. So, it's a sad, it's a sad, it's a sad story. That this little boy just vanished. Just gone. That little boy was with that guy, I reckon. At least from I'd say from the time they saw him at the garage, which I believe was the sixteenth. Right? So he was with him from then, from the sixteenth onwards, I think. And I think the only reason the mother came back last Tuesday was because something had gone wrong, happened between Elijah and that vile creature. Right? He's found the mother, she's come over, and so I reckon she knows where he is and what, what happened to him. And I think a deal will be made. First to talk, first to walk. Don't notice uh, that Jess 
Jesse Rank, like, like injured it, uh, was with him last, right? They know that. They know the mother wasn't there when you went missing. Because she told them she was at such a place, you know what I mean? They can verify that. They've got the ping phone, the phone's pinging. Yeah, so they know she wasn't there. So I think they could go, say, first to talk, first to walk. And I don't think she'd walk. She'd have some charges. She'd have, she'd have to have some prison time. But she don't talk. And talk soon. And tell them where her little boy is. Is he safe? Is he not? Where is he? Then she's not going to walk. You know what I mean? Because isn't there a, a law? If you if you're there, you know, she's an accomplice, a accomplice, accomplice to where his body is. If he is, if he has been alive and been buried or whatever, she's an accomplice to that. So she could be hanged up for that, surely. So I don't know. As I said, there's nothing much coming out. I will keep an eye on the Facebook. But, as I said, still, nothing, nothing coming out. Uh, Nothing's coming out, so. And the police aren't giving anything away, they really aren't. I'm not giving anything away. Well, we have got this, and it, I think it's uh, for Heaven really 26, which was what? Saturday? Yeah. Right. Hold on. You still hear that? We've got this article. Elijah Vu, two rivers, boys still missing, two due in court. Right. Well, we've seen that now. And I'll share that video onto Twitter. Just a video. Two Rivers, Wisconsin. The search continues for Elijah Vu, the missing Two Rivers boy, at the centre of an Amber Alert. Vu's mother, Katrina Ball, along with Jesse Bank, a man who lived at their home, are due back in court on Monday, the February the 26th. They were both arrested on child neglect charges but police did not specify whether their arrests were made in connection to Boo's disappearance. No formal charges have yet been filed, have been filed yet. Bo and Rang appeared in court on Friday, February the 23rd, a judge set Bo's bail, Barrow's bail, 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 bail at $15,000 and Vang's at 20000 and they are not allowed to have any contact with, with each other or any child under the age of 18. Authority said Bruce caregiver last saw him at 8 o'clock at his home Tuesday morning near 39 and Mishkoff in two rivers. He was last seen wearing grey pants a long sleeve dark coloured shirt and a red and green dinosaur slip on shoes. Fu is described as three feet tall, 45 pounds, with sandy hair and brown eyes. Officials said he has a birthmark on his left knee. Anyone with information to contact police at 844 267 6648 or 920 Six eight six seven two zero zero. That's it. 
it's just to repeat of what everyone's been saying for the last six days. The only new thing that came out was these two got arrested. They had the court appearance on Friday, and then they've had a court appearance today. That is it. You know what I mean? Nothing new has come out. So, but like I said, I will be keeping an eye, an eye on it. And if anything does come up about this, then... then I will get back in touch. Uh, well, actually, I'll just post it straight to my Twitter account. I won't go live again. I'll just post whatever new comes up onto my Twitter account. And then I can do a live tomorrow sometime when I finish building my TV unit. So, but there's nothing new. Nothing new. And they're all only like three minutes long, three to two minutes long, or one and a half minutes, or 44 seconds. You know what I mean? You'd think they'd put on a bigger uh, show. At least 10 minutes. Christ's sake, it's a little boy we're talking about here. If he could sit here for an hour and talk about him, I'm sure you could sit there for 10 minutes and talk about this little boy. So. Okay, then. I don't know what you all think of this case. I really don't. As I said, there isn't much to go on. There really isn't. It, I've never known a case like this where we've not had nothing, no updates, no updates from the police. No. The only public and press thing they did was the first one. Since then, it's all been on their Facebook page. And I don't think, I think they need to share the Facebook on TV, on YouTube or TV, wherever that. And I think someone should be out there filming these searches and getting all more up-to-date information on what's going on, where they've searched, where they're going to search, and things like that. So, anyway, I've got nothing else to say, and there's nothing much I can say now about uh, Audrey Cunningham, apart from he's an evil ass. You're seeing exactly what he was like yesterday when he was in the prison. How he dressed himself and then walked around to the Justice of Peace to be read his rights. With just a blanket round him. He didn't care. He really didn't care. So I'll be waiting for that trial to start. And I will air it. It will be on here. Right. The only days I can't air it is on a Friday. Not every Friday, just once a Friday every month, every fortnight, because I have my grandson. So if court is on that day, which is bound to be on a Friday, then I will just stream it live onto Twitter from the court itself. So, and then I'll just do a catch up on the Sunday evening because. Then I have my grandson, I do not have my, I do not go on to live. I might check my Twitter account, I might check my Facebook account, but I don't come and do a live. Not on those weekends. Anyway, I'd just like to say thank you for being here. If you like what you hear, give us a like. It helps with the um, YouTube algorithms and things like that it helps to get the video put out more uh can you leave me a comment if you're on twitter leave me a comment i'll read it um 
share. And if you're on YouTube, if you really want to be kept up to date, please sub sub subscribe to my YouTube channel. Because not all cases will I be putting onto Twitter. On some cases, I might just put highlighted versions of it, sort of thing. And so you never know. So I don't want anyone to miss out. So if you don't want to miss out on any future uh, video lives, sign up to my YouTube. Because sign up to my uh, Twitter account because both accounts will have, have them on. One will have the full version and one might just have highlighted version. But you'll get the full version on YouTube. But you might just get the highlighted version on Twitter. And I'm not sure if I'll be doing the Audrey. Oh no, I've got another case before then. March the 20th is coming up. There's a case coming up. I'm not sure what case that is. I think it's the Chad Durman case where we killed his three sons. I think that's the one coming up on the 20th of March. I did post uh, the four hour video on Twitter. So if you want to catch up on what's happening there, please do so. If you want to catch up on the Chad Durman, I've got it on my YouTube account. Go and watch them. They're there. So anyway, please give me a like. Please leave a comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all soon. Good night.